Hello everybody, Kyle here. Debt sizing with macros is one of the trickiest areas of project finance modeling. So here is a series of three videos directly from the project finance modeling package to help you out here. So a quick note, this isn't going through where we're getting the gearing driven debt size from or the DSCR sculpting driven debt size from. To make things a bit simpler, we're getting this from the gearing ratio, which is an input and the total funding required, which basically comes from here, the total uses on the construction tab or in the sources and uses area of your model. Okay, so here we are on the macro sheet. We've got our capital structure. We've got the calculated debt and equity and the applied debt and equity. There's no link between these yet. And so we're gonna create a macro, firstly to essentially copy this information and paste it here. As mentioned, the way we're going to do that is by recording a macro. There's a few ways to record a macro. You can go through view, macros record, or developer, record macro. Or thirdly, down here, you, can, you might have a button which says record. In general, it seems most people have the view macros record macro, so I'm going to go through there. So record macro a box pops up, it asks you for what is the macro name. And we can say maybe debt size. It then says shortcut key. So do you want to assign a shortcut key to the macro? And this is very, very poor practice. Imagine if you do it like control R or something like that. So someone, some poor hapless person goes to copyright and then it triggers your macro. So not a good idea to assign a shortcut key to that one. Store a macro in this workbook, yes. And then write a brief description. So this macro breaks the funding circularity. Well, let's say bridges the funding circularity by copying the calculated debt and equity and pasting it in the applied cells, something like that. So something descriptive, which when someone's going back later and having a look at the macro, it just tells them what the purpose is. So when I hit OK, this button turns to a square. So that's where I stop the macro. And every mouse click and every button that I click here will be recorded. So that's the whole purpose of recording a macro. So we want to do four steps, really. The first step is to select these two cells. The second step is to control C. The third step is to select these two cells. And the fourth and final step is to paste values. Alt, E, S, V. Okay. So it's pasted that over there. This is called cut copy mode, and I'll talk more about that later. But those are the four steps that we've now done. So we can now pause the macro. And by the way, if I click over here, for example, that's gonna be recorded in the macro. So now I hit stop and congratulations. If you've been following along with me, you've recorded your first macro. So now we want to be able to trigger that macro. So what we can do is you can go through the developer tab and use buttons here. So for example, form controls to trigger your macro, or you can just do it with any old shape. So you can pick a shape here and insert. You can pick a smiley face or a love heart or <laughs> whatever is your bag. I'm just going to go with something quite simple here. So this is still a shape. And I can say something like run get dit size macro. And maybe you want to put description below it as well. So this macro will optimize dit size, whatever, by copying the debt and equity amounts calculated and pasting them in the applied something like that it's better practice just to write some short description So this is still a shape. There's nothing buttony about it at the moment. 
and then you can just, I don't know, fill it however you like. You can do whichever color you kind of sets your fancy. I generally don't have a shape outline. So this is still a shape at the moment. How we trigger it to run the macro is we convert it into a trigger saying assign macro. So right click assign macro. And this menu pops up macros in and you can, this doesn't matter. This workbook, look at debt size. And that's the one macro that we have there and then click OK. And so now if I hover over it and get out of this, you see it's got a button. And let's test it works. So if I delete this, it's now dumped that in there. So it's done some functionality for us there, which is just to automate that copying paste. However, it's not iterative. So we can solve that and we can create a loop to make it iterative. Before we do that, in terms of styles, this is no longer an input. This is the output of a macro. And so we want to distinguish between those two styles. If we look here, there's no style yet for a macro paste. So we can create one. I'm going to do that by duplicating. So right click, duplicate, macro paste. We don't want number. I guess we want a font and a border and a fill. So let's format that. Let's go with fill. Okay, just playing around here, but that's sort of awful, but not too bad. So let's just go with that for now. So we've got our macro paste that distinguishes that, okay, this is something different. This comes from the macro. And you can see that here, macro paste.